At $2.3 million, Alligator Skin Diamond Studded Television. A $44 million blue canvas painting. This house valued at $2 billion. All things that you can find in lists that say these are the most expensive things. But this video isn't a list of expensive things. It is a video that shows you how expensive is more than what it actually is. And the way we're going to show that, the very first step, is through this planet, 55 Cancri E. 55 Cancri E is a planet that is theorized to have more diamond mass in it than all of Earth's mass. Somebody did a calculation and that diamond mass is worth around that much in our money. That amount of money is worth more than the entire collective GDP of all human activity in history. And that's cutting it short. If that's the case, wouldn't 55 Canker E be the most expensive thing? Well, not really, because of something called value. The planet is 40 light years away. That's only one problem. Can you imagine the logistics of trying to bring the mass of diamond from 55 Canker E back here to Earth? Even if you did, now you have more diamond mass than all of Earth's mass. Where would you put all of that? Those are only some of the very basic questions any person would question when they're attempting to buy 55 Canker E. E, you would be evaluating benefits vs costs. The issue is the cost that you would have to pay to make 55 canker E's benefits useful, well, some of them can't even be paid. You would need interstellar travel as one of the costs, and as you might have noticed, it's not something that we could do at this point in time. So if 55 canker E, which is probably sized to be worth that much, isn't really worth that much, then what is the most expensive thing? When you buy something, you don't just buy it. As I've said, you are evaluating benefits via costs, and that differs between one person to another. For example, I have with me here right now is my iPhone. My iPhone, to me, let's say that I perceive that the benefits to me, I don't know, entertainment through video games, uh, helping me organize things in my life, communicating with others, and potentially other benefits that I perceive to be useful to me as well. Others might see it differently, they might see it similarly, and they might see it completely the same. These people, for example, see that the usage of an iPhone is a really good material for building a Domino's chain. They probably have some other benefits in mind, but in essence you can see that it's different from one person to another. There are also costs associated with this iPhone. The price, the money that you would have to pay for it, is only one factor. To illustrate this, let's imagine that these are the benefits I expect I would get out of buying and using an iPhone. And those are the costs I would have to pay in order to acquire these benefits. Now what determines the value of something is the comparison between those two. The higher the benefit tower in relation to the cost tower, the more valuable something looks and vice versa. However, that's a very straightforward, simplified way of looking at this kind of dynamic. You see, when you are attempting to buy something, you're not just evaluating cost vs benefits exactly as they are, you're evaluating what benefits are more important to you in relation to other benefits and other costs, and what other costs are more important to you in relation to other benefits and other costs. In that case, buying and using an iPhone, to me, might look something like that. And this is different from one person to another, depending on how they see the transaction. To illustrate that, let's imagine this. Someone lived the exact same life as me. This person has had the same exact events happen to him as they happened to me, right to this very moment. Suddenly, they got a call, and this happened. Hello, what's that? I just inherited $50,000 worth of debt and I can't do a lot of it due to a legal loophole and I must pay it over my lifetime. Hmm. All right. That sucks. Okay then. In this case, this completely different person who has had the exact same life as me just had a mountain of debt dropped right on top of their head. And the money factor when deciding to buy something is now much more important than before. And my decision to buy and use an iPhone now might look something like that. In this scenario, this might happen. 
Hello, what's that? A sport of a cruel reality show. I'm going to be forced to live on a remote island without access to any electricity or technology for an entire year? Okay. That sucks. All right then. In this case, the benefits of buying and using an iPhone look completely different than before because of the fact that an iPhone without access to electricity or other technology might be as good as a brick. And in this particular case, the dynamic of benefits vs costs might look something like that. There is probably still some value to the iPhone, but it's just not as much as before, especially in line with the fact that you have to pay a lot of costs in order to acquire this iPhone. Let's see what happens in this scenario. Hello, what's that? Apple just released an update to their iOS system that allows the users of their new iPhones to gain access to a feature called Warp Drive, traveling faster than light to hundreds of millions of galaxies in an instant, completely changing the fate of mankind forever? Really? All right, that's good to hear. Okay then. In this particular case, buying and using an iPhone is now much more valuable than before, at least to me. I like Warp Drive, I want to go anywhere in the universe. That sounds like a cool idea to me. The benefit, this new benefit, would outweigh the costs by so much and would completely overshadow the other benefits that I was trying to get that you wouldn't even view it as a phone anymore. This is the evaluation process for benefits vs costs. But it's not as simple as that. Now with that said, think of this. Are free things truly free? If this uh, guy randomly approached you in the street and offered you a free chocolate bar, would you take it? What if it was offered by this lady? Would you take it now? What if it was offered by someone in your immediate family? If the chocolate bar was offered by me, would you take it now? The answers are different depending on who you are. Some of you might have said yes to all of them. Some of you might have said no. Some of you have probably have had mixed answers. The primary reason, reason is the fact that a lot of you think differently and have different perceptions. But the thing is, nothing can truly be free because there is nothing that has zero cost factors. Just the mere act of extending your hand to take the chocolate bar is a cost on its own. And there's also the matter of the fact that you're not just evaluating the cost of the chocolate bar, you're also evaluating the cost of the situation that is going to give you the chocolate bar, even though it is technically free. There is a fact that, for example, that this guy is well, more dangerous than probably this lady, and you're evaluating that as well. In order for something to truly be free, you would have to lower every single cost factor to zero, which is a very difficult thing to do. There is a way that this situation gets more complicated than just that. The problem is, is that so far we've been saying benefits vs costs on an individual level, but this dynamic also happens on a much larger scale. For example, you belong to your family, and your family probably also takes decisions where benefits as costs are also weighed in. You also belong, for example, to your workplace, which are also evaluating benefits as costs. Gym buddies? Yes, probably happens as well. Your video game clan that you like to play with? Yes, it's probably happening there as well. And these groups belong to even larger groups. You have your extended family. Your workplace might belong to a regional office, and so on and so forth. Eventually, you reach multinational corporations, governments. You reach countries, continents. But at the end of all of that, there is only one group that encompasses all of these groups and all the individual members making up these groups. And that is society overall. The reason I'm mentioning this is because answering the question what is the most expensive thing is probably more relevant on the level of human society overall rather than the individual members that make up the society because they have different perceptions and they evaluate benefits vs costs differently depending on who they are. Now, the decisions that society makes based on the thinking of individual members that make the society is referred to as the social choice theory. And I can definitely say that the choice or the answer for the what is the most expensive thing to society overall isn't that, it's not this, it's not that, and it's definitely not this. As an individual, when you are evaluating benefits via costs, chances are you have a larger purpose in mind. For example, you pay the costs associated with a textbook in order to gain benefits, one of which is completing your college 
class. You pay the cost associated with completing this class in order to gain the benefit of completing your college degree. You pay the cost of completing your college degree in order to gain the benefit of potentially finding a career. You pay the cost associated with finding a career in order to gain another benefit that you have in mind and that could be a cost for another benefit and that could be a cost for another benefit and so on and so forth until you reach the ultimate benefits that you are trying to achieve what those benefits are they are probably different depending on the person maybe it's coasting through life maybe it's just survival maybe it's becoming a functioning member of society maybe it's a combination of all of those and possibly even larger benefits larger purposes that you're not even aware of now, because these ultimate benefits differ from one individual to another, the answer to what is the most expensive thing is also different depending on the individual that you have at hand. And this also applies to the groups that these individuals belong to because they also have their own ultimate benefits that they are trying to gain all the way until society, which is the largest group that encompasses all of these groups and all of the individuals making up these groups. And the ultimate benefits that society is trying to gain well, there are no other ultimate benefits because these ultimate benefits belong to the group that includes everyone. What these ultimate benefits to society overall are difficult to say. Perhaps it is the expansion of society to the maximum state it is allowed to by the given amount of resources that are available. Perhaps it is expanding beyond Earth to other solar systems. Perhaps. It is the replacement of inefficient individual members of society with something much more efficient, <coughs> artificial intelligence. Perhaps it's the same as any other organism, self-preservation. Perhaps it's a combination of all of those. But either way, the answer to what is the most expensive thing, I believe, are all the costs associated with the decisions taken by individuals and the groups these individuals belong to in order to achieve society's ultimate benefits. That has been my take on what is the most expensive thing. Thank you very much and I will see you next time.